I have traveled to the huge, amazingly intense depths of British Columbian outback to get to this mystical froggy totem pole. It's all to review Frogger Advance, the great quest for the Game Boy Advance. This game is a 2D side-scrolling platform game. Now, guess what the objective of this game is. Go ahead, guess. You're right, you have to go and save a princess. Guess what else you have to do? Collect tokens, correct. So, here you are. You collect tokens and you go and find a princess. I've heard this somewhere before. The gold tokens get you to the end of the level. The blue tokens will get you the health power-ups and the silver tokens will get you these big old diamond things. But at the end of certain levels, you actually get power-ups like, for example, the most innovative double jump. You also get the f big floaty stomach. You go and your stomach sticks up. But my favorite one is the super tongue attack. It's exactly like Castlevania. Instead of like this big old whip that the Castlevania dude has, you got a big old lickily tongue. And you actually go back through the levels and use your big lickily super tongue attack blah, 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 to, to, to get into areas you couldn't get or to explode rocks that you couldn't previously explode. So there is some replay value here. I would have loved to have seen the old Frogger game somewhere hidden in this. Not very innovative, but a fun game nonetheless. 7.0. Frogger. What do you think of yeah. Test Drive? What do you think of this game? Well, you know, Test Drive has been around a long time. Yeah. And this is the first Test Drive game we've seen on the next generation platforms. I mean, it's got a few interesting ideas behind the design. Like, you're, you're playing a character named Derek Black, and you're sort of involved in this in this story where there's this underground racing league, which is kind of like Fast and the Furious or, you know, got that Gone in 60 Seconds vibe. But the driving itself, it's so lifeless and boring. Well, I, I, I don't mind the controls on the car. I mean, it's yeah. definitely an, a more of an arcade style. It reminded me of Cruisin', a Cruisin' USA game. What I did notice on the Xbox version yes. is that the, the, like, all the cars are like flying all over the place. Well, that's what drove me nuts. I mean, Test Drive used to be all about realism and sort of getting the simulation down. Right, and it's more like Gran Turismo, I thought. Yeah, and then now in this game, I mean, you bump into cars and they go flying for hundreds of feet and, you know, nothing slows you down and the cops have no real correlation to reality. They'll come chase you, but they won't really do anything. And then right. they might touch you once and they'll bust you. There are some interesting elements in here. I mean, you can, you can have a drag race, you've got circuit racing, you've got linear type, types of racing where you have to get from point A to point B. Uh, there's the story mode, which is called the underground. Well, no, wait, the best part is that when the screen loads in, yeah. you get to play Pong. Oh, that is the best That's part a, of the that game. That is very cool. It, I, I, you, I, I, interactive I, loading screens, great idea. Everybody yeah. should do it. There's also, you know, some nice-looking environments in, in London and Tokyo and San Francisco and Monaco. What I like about Test Drive, though, is I, I, I really like the cars that they've licensed. Yeah, I do, they, too. They yeah. just don't go with the normal cars that everybody usually gets. Yeah. They go with, like, the Hemi Cuda. Oh, I love that. And the Lotus Elise. I wish that the game was just a little bit more refined and a little more realistic. You know, I would have probably enjoyed this thing quite a bit, just on the nature of the fact that they've chosen these interesting cars to, to race around it. I had a lot of fun when I was playing, you know, just other people. Yeah. Uh, but as a single-player game, yeah, you know, it, it just it just doesn't, it, it's just so ordinary and so... Mediocre, man. Mediocre is a perfect word it's, for it. It's, it really is. it's mediocre, and on the Xbox, you just, you can't tolerate that. And this whole sort of Dennis Black story mode where you're getting these little video conference sort of info about what what the next mission is all about as you're sort of pretending to race and then right. they give you the mission interesting idea poorly executed the voice acting's bad i hope you got refundable tickets sport because i guarantee you'll be enjoying the next round from the comfort of clark's living room the fact that you can use the microsoft xbox hard drive to, to throw your own tunes, yeah. Your own tunes. Yeah. So, like, you, you, there's nothing cooler than racing to, like, Beethoven or... Paul Oakenfold. You were at Paul Oakenfold in yeah. there, and that was awesome. So what are you going to give Test Drive on the Xbox? Well, you know, like you said, it's a mediocre game, so it kind of deserves a mediocre score. I'm going to give it a 6.5. I'm giving it a 6 out of 10. On the positive side, we like the choices they made as far as which cars they licensed. The music's pretty cool, and you can import your own music to play. Finally, if you really like the arcade driving tight controls, then you're probably going to like this game. 
On the negative side, what's up with those cruising USA type physics in the game? The squealing tire sound gets very annoying very quickly. And overall, the game just suffers from mediocrity, especially if you compare it to some of the kick-ass Xbox racers that are already on the shelves. Tommy, I got something that's gonna make you happy. We're gonna review the spider pad controller for the PlayStation 2 from Naki. Now, what'd you think of this device? Well, I tell you what, I saw this thing advertised a couple months ago on the back cover of my Spider-Man comic. Yeah. And I was like flipping out. We gotta say that the device is actually quite a bit larger than the PlayStation 2 controller. So it does take a little bit of getting used to. It's right. It, 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 you do gotta have to stretch your fingers out to hit those shoulder buttons. Well, that's the one problem I had with this controller was that the shoulder buttons, you know the R2 and the L2 buttons on the PlayStation controller are extended? Well, these, they're not the longer extended buttons. They're the same size as the top ones, the R1 and the L1. How about that slow-mo button? Wait, why, why bother? <laughs> it, Almost as useless as the turbo button, which is also on I, I think it's slightly less useless. I like the fact that the, uh, the, the, the controller also has a long cord on the thing, too, because right. the PlayStation 2 controller cord is a little bit too short, I think. Right, yeah. So I highly recommend this thing because aesthetically, yes. it is the best looking controller, not just because I love Spider-Man. Yeah, it's the right. best look Okay, maybe it is. <laughs> but it's the best looking controller I've ever seen. And I like the grips and the way it, it fits in my hand. I, I like the controller too. I want a Batman controller. Oh, there you go. Where's my Batman Where's controller? Where's the Batman controller? Well, there's no good Batman games yet, so. so I guess that's what I they're rubbing it in. I'm waiting for a good Batman game. On the positive side, this thing just looks cool. The grips are extended down really nice and they fit in your hand really comfortably. And the cord on it is super long so you can play from like seven miles away. On the negative side, you have to kind of reach for those shoulder buttons because the controller is a little bit larger than the PS2 regular one. The R2 and L2 buttons on the Spidey controller aren't as big as they are on the regular pack-in PS2 controller. But the worst thing about the Spidey pad is that there's no Batman controller and I'm going to sit here and pout until they make me one. Stick around, because after the break, Tommy and I are going to be reviewing High Heat Baseball 2003 for the PC. You like baseball, right? <laughs>